In this episode of The Chop, we will be looking at ZK Snarks. A lot of blockchains and protocols have recently started to introduce ZK proofing into their consensus algorithms. ZK Snarks utilize a concept known as zero knowledge proofs and they are a way where one party can prove to the other party that it has the correct information without actually revealing what the information is and without any interaction between both parties. Now, let's call this secret information the witness and let's call the party that has the witness and who wants to prove its legitimacy the prover. And let's call the other party that doesn't have the witness but who will verify its legitimacy the verifier. Now, you can see that both parties also have a piece of public information which is called the public statement and represented by X. So the way the prover can prove to the verifier that the secret witness is correct without the prover showing the verifier the witness is made possible through a mathematical proof called ZK Snarks. ZK Snarks stands for Zero Knowledge Succinct Non-Interactive Argument of Knowledge. Zero knowledge means that no information regarding the thing that is being proved is revealed, so the witness is not revealed. Succinct means that the proof is processed very quickly within a few milliseconds. Non-interactive means that communication is not sent back and forth between the prover and the verifier. Argument of knowledge can be defined as a computationally sound proof and ZK Snacks use arithmetic circuits to achieve this proof. ZK Snacks are not only revolutionary for blockchain utilities but also for traditional applications. Imagine proving that a bank account has a certain amount of money in it without sharing its balance. Imagine proving to someone that you're a citizen of a country without giving them your name and passport. Imagine casting a vote without revealing your identity and logging into a website without the website server storing your password. Well, all of this is made possible with zero knowledge proofs. Now, as explained earlier, the non-interactive part of zero knowledge succinct non-interactive arguments of knowledge means that there is no subsequent interaction other than the initial single one, which is the sending of that proof from the prover to the verifier. This is contrast to a similar proof known as ZK SIAC, which stands for Zero Knowledge Succinct Interactive Argument of Knowledge, which uses similar proofing. However, in its case, the verifier and prover communicate to each other multiple times. SIACs have their own uses, however, in this video, we're not focusing on these interactive proofs. We are looking at non-interactive proofs only. <laughs> In order for the verifier to be able to decode the received proof, he needs to have context. This is where a public parameter comes in, which is known as a pre-processing argument system. Both the prover and verifier separately receive a public parameter, which is generated by the pre-processing setup in an initial setup phase. This essentially allows them both to compute the same proof, and this initial setup phase can have its own security and centralization risks, depending on how it is generated. I've adapted some of these pre-processing images from this video by Zero Knowledge. So if you want to know more about pre-processing, go check out this video. It's amazing. It's important to note that some of the arithmetic circuit C, which forms part of the proof, is actually calculated within the pre-processing argument, where both the prover and the verifier receive the public parameter S from, represented by SP for the prover, public parameter, and SV for the verifier public parameter. Note that this public S is different from the public function X that was shown earlier. X forms part of the proof where the polynomial is solved, whereas S is separately received by both the prover and verifier and is generated by the pre-processing circuit where the polynomial is produced. This processing of the circuit in the pre-processing circuit and the generating of SP and SV from it, which are given to the prover and verifier, is what allows the prover to calculate and the verifier to verify the proof so quickly. In fact, the proof is calculated in logarithmic time by the verifier. Logarithmic in regards to the size of the circuit. If the area under the curve represents time, then you can see that the logarithmic area is smaller than the area underneath the linear timeline. Hence, the logarithmic calculation takes less time. This means that the proof is verified by the verifier quicker than it takes time to read the circuit proof in linear time. This is possible because SP and SV both contain a short summary of the circuit. In fact, the quickness of which this statement is proved is a main factor why ZK snacks are used in layer 2 rollups as opposed to their security features they also provide. So let's edit this image and add the public parameter for the prover and verifier represented by SP and SV. Now, the math behind ZK snack proofs becomes very high level very quickly. 
but I will simplify it to high school level maths. Essentially, arithmetic circuits are used to compute polynomials. The main functions of these arithmetic circuits are to prove that you know some polynomial f of x that has some roots. First, the polynomial is written in terms of arithmetic gates and in this image we can see how x cubed plus x plus 5 is written as a sequence of gates that handle at most two inputs per operation. So a polynomial is just an equation with variables to the nth power with coefficients and variables and the roots are the solution of the respective polynomial. Hence, it is the solution of these polynomials that allow proof of knowledge of the polynomial itself. The prover wants to show that they know an input value, a solution of the equation that causes the equation to equal zero. The blue line is a graphical representation of an equation, a polynomial function. The roots of a polynomial function are always when the equation crosses the x-axis. So when y equals zero visually, or when the equation or function is set equal to zero. As you can see, this equation crosses the x-axis three times, therefore it is a third order polynomial and has three roots. This is how the polynomial equation represented by the blue line looks. As you can see, its highest order is three, represented by its three roots. When this equation is set to zero, its roots will be one, two, and three. As you can see, that is where it crosses the x-axis. Now, let's take a separate polynomial equation, x cubed minus three x squared plus two x. Now, polynomials can be written as a product of their roots, as seen on the right hand side of the equation. This means that if this equation was in graphical form, it would cross the x-axis at three points, x equals zero, x equals one, and x equals two. It would be the same as the previous graph shown, but shifted to the left by one unit. Let's call this polynomial Px, bearing in mind at this stage, the polynomial will be written as an arithmetic circuit within a ZK snark as explained before. However, simply put, in a ZK proof, a prover could claim they know a polynomial of order three, so to the power of three, let's say Px, with roots one and two, so with two roots. Hence, if the prover wants to prove that indeed his polynomial or her polynomial has those two roots without Disclosing the polynomial itself, he needs to prove or she needs to prove that their polynomial, Px, is a multiplication of those cofactors x minus 1 and x minus 2 called the target polynomial, Zx we refer to as, and some arbitrary polynomial, let's refer to that as Hx, which is the remaining factor, which is x minus 0. The reason the prover can only make known two of the roots is because with all three roots, a verifier could simply multiply them together in order to recreate the original polynomial. A way the prover can show hx is through division of the polynomial and the target polynomial. When multiplied out, this is shown here and it renders x as a result, which is indeed the third root, which means that the polynomial has the necessary cofactors and is legitimized. That's a simple example of how a prover determines a proof. We will see a more advanced form of this equation later. If the result of the division of the original polynomial and target polynomial doesn't have a remainder, then the outcome hx is a factor of the polynomial. If there is a remainder, as the verifier selects random values to test with this target polynomial, there is a small chance that a random selection of number will render the polynomial evenly divisible. In order to avoid this, px and hx have to be integers when being verified to avoid any remainders, and that is a reason to why cryptographic primitives are used. Now the prover could construct a higher order polynomial which shares a common point slash root with the target polynomial, an arbitrary polynomial. To avoid this, a form of encryption called homomorphic encryption is used. That is a very simplified view of how ZK snarks work. Now there are several types of ZK proof constructions. The one we are providing a simplified explanation of is called Groff 16. As we saw earlier in the pre-processing stage, both public parameters SP and SV are derived from a public arithmetic circuit C. Simply put, Groff 16 relies on a trusted setup for the arithmetic circuit, which forms our polynomials, and where both the public parameters S are derived from. The arithmetic circuit is used to form a rank 1 constrained system, R1CS, which is a system of equations which checks the correctness of all the operations in our circuit. It does this by grouping the polynomials into constraints which is a set of vectors that satisfies a public statement and witness whose solution is the vector s. It looks something like this, where a, b, c and s are vectors. A quadratic arithmetic program, QAP, is then used to turn the r1, c, s vectors into a polynomial representation, as a QAP allows us to simultaneously check all of the constraints at once. A QAP satisfies the following equation. This is a more complete version of the example we did earlier, with the polynomial px on the left, 
and the target polynomial zx and arbitrary polynomial hx on the right hand side. This time the polynomial is in a fuller form taking into account an arithmetic circuit over a finite field f with bilinear maps and bilinear groups of prime order and generators. More advanced mathematical concepts than what we've done in this video but all essential parts of a growth 16 ZK snark. I've talked briefly through some of the main concepts involved in building a ZK proof. The process can be summarized as computation to arithmetic circuit, which we showed, arithmetic circuit to R1CS, which we mentioned, R1CS to quadratic arithmetic program QAP, which we mentioned, verifying the QAP, which we did the basic example of with the division of the polynomial and target polynomial, converting QAP to a non-interactive proof argument, at this stage to create a proof using the infrastructure laid, the provable build proof vectors using public polynomials, send it to the verifier who also has the public statement and who now has the proof. If the polynomials are satisfied, the proof is accepted. Another way to visualize the process is that Groff 16 consists of three algorithms, a setup algorithm, a proven algorithm and a verification algorithm. From the setup algorithm, we went through the proving key and verification key, also known as a public parameter we called SP and SV. From the proven algorithm, we went through a simple example of a polynomial calculation. This is then encrypted using some of the methods mentioned and sent as a proof. Then the verifier passes the proof which we discussed using techniques such as generators to independently verify the proof. The three algorithms can be summed up in this visual form here. It's important to note that this is still a simplification and a more accurate flow for the setup algorithm, proving and verification algorithm can be found here in the paper by Maxim Petkus which is one of the papers I recommend if you want to learn more on this topic. I have a list of recommended literature in the description of the video. As mentioned at the start of the video, new E from layer 2 ZK Sync utilizes ZK snacks within ZK rollups in order to increase capacity and speed whilst reducing fees. ZK Sync is a layer 2 alternative to Polygon, Arbitrum and Optimism. In the recent past and more recently, many protocols and companies have started to implement ZK rollups which utilize a variety of ZK snacks. As early as 2017, JP Morgan integrated ZK Snarks into their Quadom blockchain. Ethereum founder Vitalik wrote about ZK Snarks in 2016. Immutable X, which is a large scale NFT platform for games which raised over $200 million in funding in 2022, uses ZK Snarks. Mina Protocol, the world's lightest blockchain, is powered by ZK Snarks. Polygon launched Polygon ID in 2023 which is an identity solution for businesses that utilizes ZK Snarks. As mentioned before, ZK Snarks and their variants such as ZK Starks and Bulletproofs are used not just because of their privacy features, but also because of their speed and compressibility features in ZK rollups. Though the concept of zero proof has been around for decades, we are just at a stage where this technology is just starting to gain mainstream traction and it may be used as part of the tech stack in an application, program or service that you use soon.